Good morning, fellow privateers. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. <clears throat> Welcome to the week ahead outlook. From your friends at Privateer FX, I'm trying out this new um, Microsoft video recording device. Let's see how it goes. Um, so we had, uh, let's talk about a little bit about last week. Uh, we've had some more positive China-U.S. trade front news. Um, things are looking like uh, they've achieved consensus, at least in principle, for this phase one. You've obviously seen risk on and equities on the back of that. There's also a headline over the weekend that said uh, the U.S. may not need to put any tariffs on the European autos. That would be that would be good. Uh, I think it was Ross that came out. And then uh, I saw another headline that S&P's Jordan, SNB's Jordan, says there's more room for rate cuts in uh, Switzerland. Um, Trump is speaking, actually, as I'm recording here, kind of midday midday in the States. Um, Trump says China trade deal signing will be somewhere in the U.S. So it was going to be in Chile and there's been protests and so they've canceled that uh, that meeting. Um, so who knows? I mean, I guess the Chinese delegates will be coming to the U.S. and it looks like they're going to get through this this phase one. Um, we had a decent, uh, you know, a better than expected jobs number and the revisions were higher on Friday. So um, the ISM number was not as bad as um, the previous months, the manufacturing data and the China manufacturing data was okay. So overall, it was just kind of a risk on feel to the latter part of the week. And the week ahead, we have um, out of Australia, we got the retail sales, which is important. Um, we also have some of the manufacturing PMIs coming out of Europe and Japan. And, um, and then we have the, the service data, I believe is all on Tuesday. And that's kind of the global um, ISM services and PMI services across the globe. So, you know, it's, it's important data. We want to see where we are globally on the, on the, you know, on the growth front and see if corporations are spending or holding back. And, um, so, you know, th these will be closely watched all week. Um, as far as central bank meetings go, the, uh, probably, you know, the, the, the two big ones would be the RBA, um, and we're not expecting any change this at this meeting. And then we have the Bank of England, which would be on Thursday. And the, I believe there, oh, let's see, what do we got? Bank of England, let's see. Uh, yeah, that would be Thursday. Um, I think the last communication, they said future interest rate rises should be gradual and limited in the event of a Brexit deal. And things are certainly looking up um, on, on the, uh, the Brexit front. Um, along with that Bank of England, I mean, we have the quarterly inflation report. So that's, you know, traders do pay attention to the inflation report. Um, and what else do we have coming out? Um, Friday's Japanese statement of monetary policy on Friday for the quarterly SOMP out of the RBA. Um, some trade data. Um, so anyhow, you know, there's enough to kind of dig into this week. You know, on the uh, as far as macroeconomic. Uh, indicators go. You can see this chart that I've you've been staring at since I started this um, is of the S&P. And this is a uh, chart that I believe it was Greg McKenna. I've seen it a couple other places on Twitter. You know, people are definitely watching this and you know, it goes all the way back to 
um, I believe it was the, that was the little meltdown in uh, late Jan of 18, the VIX product implosion. So this is a megaphone top, and you can see here uh, last week, this is a weekly chart, remember it's Sunday, my time, Monday yours, so we like to look at the weeklies. We're breaking out. Um, Peter Brandt, who is a, a widely followed classical chartist, pretty old school ex-floor trader, um, he's been on Real Vision, I've seen him, he's got a service factor technical or something like that. Um, you know, very well respected classical chartist is calling for his target for this move in the S&Ps is 35.25. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, and I think that if we get, you know, we seem to be following a, uh, following a similar pattern, uh, I believe it was back in 2013 where the S&Ps then, you know, rallied into, uh, in the year end. So, you know, it's only 400. I mean, it seems like a long way, but we've got two months left in the trading year. You never know. We could get to that target by year end. Um, just looking at like performances, weekly changes on the, in the, in some of the products where we follow cable was up 0.88%. The Australian dollar did well, was up 1.3%. Uh, <laughs> Here is a weekly that we drew a while ago. It's an okay line, um, but you get the gist. We are, you know, after putting in this, uh, why can't I expand this? You know, we had this double bottom back in, uh, you know, in, in, well, in 2019, we've had a couple of weekly lows here. And, you know, now we are just taking out this trend line that came in right around 69. So we probably have some room to the top side in Aussie, especially on the, you know, with the, the trade news and everything else that is all the other risk on uh, variables that seem to be upon us. Uh, the Kiwi dollar is another one, you know, very similar to, um, to Aussie. Do I not have it in here? Let's put it in. I was looking at this earlier. You know, I closed up you know, near the, near the highs of the week. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a little uptrend now. And, uh, you know, I can see that getting back up into the, you know, kind of the middle of this area. So maybe 65, 66. Uh, the S and P was up 1.5%. Uh, we looked at that chart. That looks, that looks good. It looks like it's on, on the, on the way, you know, potentially, uh, Assuming we don't have any negative trade headlines coming out between now and year on, I, I could see that thing just grinding higher because positioning is still pretty light. And, uh, you know, we're not super overbought at this point. Um, some of the other charts we were looking at um, were dollar. Hold on, 10 years. Here's a 10 year yield. This is interesting. So 10 year yield was actually closed lower on the week. We had an outside reversal lower week, which doesn't really seem to jive with the risk on feel that has, you know, that was in the market. So I, I don't know what's going on there. We've been, been trying to be short some 10 years and 30 years in buns and you know, looking for higher yields. I, I, I kind of thought, you know, where we are here now in S and P's, I would have thought that tender yields would be, you know, above 190, um, above this whole weekly high, and you know, on its way to kind of that 210 to 212, 215 target. So that one is not, you know, maybe they're still concerned about global growth, and maybe the bond market's the right one, and the equity market's the wrong indicator of what is really um, expected in the, in the future, you know, here's the 30 year, same thing, pretty ugly, pretty ugly looking. Um, the Bund, oh, let's go before we get over the Bund. Here's a dollar index. So the overall dollar index closed in the lows of the week. 
pretty much closed right on that that week uh, that weekly close from two weeks ago. We've broken this trend line, and this is a weekly chart. We think that this first stop is somewhere 96.50, but you know we we think that uh, this weaker dollar could help reflate. It would do you know. It would help out the emerging markets. It would help out uh, exports from the uh, from the U.S. And you know the, the the government. You know Trump wants a weaker dollar. He might just get it, but you got to be careful what you wish for because positioning is still very long dollars. And I would imagine after seeing um, the price action the past month or so, the dollar longs are starting to worry a bit about the uh, potential for a, a bigger move um, lower in the dollar. And here's a, the euro dollar, you know, looks exactly the same. We broke that trend line. We went two weeks ago, we went back below it. And then this week we closed right back above it. So a lot of head fakes. You want to see some head fakes. Let's take a look at gold. Um, so our base case is we think we're on the cusp of um, of more pronounced dollar weakness. If we look at dollar stock. Yeah, I like to look at this one. Um, you know, there's a nice trend line that can be drawn from down here. Um, I have this on my Bloomberg charts. I apologize. I thought I had this here. Go back. We closed just below it. Last week, so that's dollar stock. It's been a huge uptrend, you know, all the way back from January of 2018. You know, so we're coming up on a two-year uptrend line, and I like to watch this one because it's a little bit off people's radars, um, but you know, it looks similar to the euro, you know, on an inverse, and it looks like the dollar index. So uh, this is definitely. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the currency pairs that we'll we'll watch for further signs of um, dollar dollar weakness. Gold has just chopped people to pieces. We had a uh, let me go to the daily, so I'm going to show you this this chop fest that we've unfortunately we got caught up in. Um, we had a false break higher. Um, there is this this guy. Okay, so we had the false break higher, back down, closed on it. Then you want to draw the other side of the triangle. You can take this low here. False break lower, closed right just below it, and then up the next three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, you know, and that was after... The, uh, the Fed meeting on Wednesday is when it, it started getting legs. So now it's kind of broken out to the top side. And then the dailies, it you know, looks pretty good. On the weeklies, um, we had, you know, almost made a new low, but then we closed in the upper end of the range. So this to me looks like it, it's been perma bid. There seemed to be someone, my guess is some central banks that are just buying any dip because Every time it looks heavy, it's bouncing, and it's been frustrating for anyone with a view for more than you know an intraday kind of day trade. Um, it's been impossible to trade, but now it kind of looks like it wants to go up. Um, platinum, it looks pretty good. Um, let's take a look at copper. We're long some copper. We've been long copper. Bought some copper last week. Closed lower on the week, bought some high ones, but we're also long from you know a few weeks ago, so we're still in pretty good shape here. And, you know, copper on the reflation story, copper should do well, and commodities should do well, and you're, you're starting to see some of that um, in the commodity space. And obviously, they do particularly well when you get a weaker dollar, which, like I said earlier, is our base case of um, we do think that we're on the cusp, if not. You know, if we haven't already started a dollar downtrend, 
which again with the positioning coupled with the positioning could turn into a bit of a dollar route and uh, that would please the our fearless leader Donald Trump um, if in fact that happens um, just looking at positioning data right now and Market's getting shorter 10-year bonds, which I get because I think they're confused by the strength that we saw last week on the back of all the other risk on. And uh, Euro positioning, Euro shorts were added. Aussie shorts were paired back a bit. Uh, Canadian dollar longs were increased. So, yeah, I think I think it's going to be, a, you know, it'll be an interesting week. I, I think we'll have... Um, We'll have some action, you know, might, might not be all in the currencies, it, um, but, uh, you know, there's other marks to be trading. Each you're paying attention to gold and copper, some of the other commodities and fixed income might uh, show its true self this week. Um, tempted to sell some bonds again, sell some bones. Um, let's look at a bone chart here. There is a bit of a, here it is. So we've got these weekly lows. We had that weekly low there. We had two. So we took that out kind of at a falsy. Um, you know, I would, and it is actually an outside bar, if this trading view is correct, I'd be looking for a, you know, you could sell it through last week's lows. And you can see this topping pattern. I mean, it's not really a head and shoulders, but it's kind of a goofy looking head and shoulders. Um, so that's one that we'll be we'll be playing and and, and watching this week. All the all, all the other equity markets, you know, here's the DAX, blah blah blah. New high weekly closes, new high daily closes. Um, you know, we tend not to go home short a market as making a new high daily and weekly close. Uh, you know, here's the S&P future. Looks kind of like that SPX chart that we looked at. Um, what else is, what else got our attention? Oil's not doing a whole lot of anything. Um, where is that WTI? Here's NatGas. NatGas had a huge week. Um, NatGas was up about I want to say like 15% at one point this week. It did pull back a little bit. Um, if you look at the daily, it pulled back a bit on uh, on Thursday at a reversal or day. But then we, we closed the week out right near the highs. Um, you know, I don't know if that's just due to the colder weather uh, in, the, in the States. We've had some unseasonably record cold out in the mountains, now in the western U.S., um, you know, for, for October, um, they were setting records with below zero temperatures and, you know, winter is certainly uh, approaching fast here in the Midwest. So um, this one's one that we've been looking to buy some dips this week. We got a little, got a little lucky on Thursday because it did dip and, uh, and then it was a nice strong close on Friday. So anyhow, I think that's about it. Um, talked about the economic data and for the week ahead and we will be, you'll be hearing from us on the open in Europe tomorrow per usual. And, uh, our guy in Dublin has been asking if you like the video, like it, follow us on Twitter, follow us on, on, uh, YouTube, like us on YouTube, retweet it. All that social media stuff that is, uh, I'm still learning about. It's, you know, I, I'm not a millennial. And, uh, you know, share it with your friends. And if you like it, hit the little heart button, hit a thumbs up button, whatever you got to do. Um, pass it along. All right. Well, good luck trading this week. We will speak to you on the European Open. And, uh, We'll be checking in, you know, follow us on Twitter. We, we do our intraday updates there. If there's anything really pressing, uh, you know, we can send, we'll be sending extra videos, you know, midweek. 
So good luck and uh, make some money this week. Cheers.